First things you can consider when you're adding these, and I'm going to use pencil crayons to keep it simple. Now, these pencil crayons are Lyra's and they're artist quality, so that means they're going to be light fast. We talked about that a little bit in the first class. You could get, say, Crayola from the, um, you know, from just a toy store or wherever, and um, and try it. But sometimes you may find that over a little bit of time, the color will fade. Whereas if you're going to buy an artist quality pencil crayon, then you know the color will stay. Just the same as with using artist quality paints. Okay, so the first thing you could do with a painting like this is you could choose out light colors and just start accentuating what you have. So we have some blues going on and you could choose different hues. And we have some greens here already and we have some sort of pinky reds. So this is sort of a first option, and I, I've been given permission to play on this. And, um, and we could just start putting lines in, and, and you notice even here, like it doesn't show up really well because I'm using very similar, but maybe, maybe I decide to add some lines here. When you're, look, when you're starting with color, this is one of your first options, is just to play around and add marks that are similar in color to the painting you're already working on. Because the truth is, the painting hasn't changed a whole lot, but I've sort of had some fun adding marks. And you can also, remember we did talk about mark making a little bit when we were working on paints. Because when you're removing paints, or even applying paints, you're making marks. So some things that I've said here to consider are, how do you want to make the marks here? I mean, you, you notice here I, I did some that are very um, linear. I could even get a ruler. Oh good, I have my ruler. And make them very defined if I chose to do that. Or I could make them very gestural here and, and just sort of scribble on it. It could be a word or a symbol. But these are all things to consider with your content, what, what this quilt is about. So you know, this quilt could be about love, let's say. And if it's about love, maybe some hearts would work well on there. You know, or maybe um, Georgina decides to write the word love on there, or love quilt, or whatever. But knowing what you're painting about really helps you with when you're putting marks. It's just another component. The next thing, when we talked about color and we did the color wheel, and we looked at how these color gradations change, and if you add um, white or black, you're changing colors. So same when you're doing marking in your painting. You can always add white or black. Let's use a different painting now, just for getting a sense of adding white or black. So this is John's, right? So he could start by choosing different hues or making marks with um, the same colors here. But now we're moving on to this next piece. And this is a nice way to look at your painting if you need to add more contrast. Now with these layers, you can paint over all this. So if you don't like it, that's fine. And I think alcohol removes this stuff. Um, so I'm just throwing in some circular lines. And there's some circles going on here. We have some circle forms. This is sort of an intuitive call, but it seems to go with his overall patterning here. So just kind of fun. And the white goes very nicely on the, on the blue. So those are some ideas. The next thing is specific to the patchwork paper painting. And um, Barb's example is so perfect. So what she's doing here is she's using a analogous color palette, which is pretty much, she went over to the purples. I would say it's right in here at the top. So she's got her green blues, her blues, and the violet in here. Mm -hmm. Okay, and so now I'm gonna, so I'm gonna point the top of my color wheel to the top of this analogous area, okay? So generally I would say the middle point is probably around the blue, yes? I mean, you can use all, all of these colors. You've got the violet, the blue, green, um, right in there. And we're gonna go to the complement and also to the split complement. So here I have a variety of colors to choose from that would make really great accents to this painting and really add some interest and some punch, so to say, with color. So with this painting, I've got orange, I've got um, yellow, orange, and I've got yellow. And the other thing is when you get into yellow, orange, and orange, then you can think metallics. So um, Kathleen's kindly brought bronze. Bronze doesn't really sing to me with this painting, but I would go with more if you have um, a gold pen. I'm not sure, and I do. I have a gold paint pen, and that might be gold goes really nicely with purple as an accent. That might be something else for you to consider. 
And this is solving a problem of using an analogous color palette like you did for your patchwork paper where it can seem a little washed out. So you're getting lots of tools in your toolbox for taking your paintings to a next level. Say so I'm hesitant to encourage students to use a lot of metallics in the body of their paintings because metallics are so opaque and so um, strong that they, you know what I mean, they're beautiful for accents, but when they get into the, the whole, all of them, you can't do layering with them. They're not gonna work for layering. So it's just something to consider. Okay, so this is a paint pen. Don't ask me if it's acid free, I don't know. Um, it's a little chewed out, so that's okay. Um, but this is, again, a, it's a really nice way. We're using a kind of complementary, split complementary um, color on here. And if you're gonna buy these, I recommend the Sharpie paint pens. So I'm keeping in form with uh, Barb's composition on her patch of paper. And you can see this, uh, this paint pen sort of almost at the end of its life. But look at that, that gold. So it really adds a punch to that. And you see how I use the color wheel to really help me make that decision. And some people just do it intuitively. Remember what we talked about when we talked about composition is when you have a very solid composition and overlapping frames is a very solid foundation, you can play on it because it really knows what it is. Um, and then if it doesn't work, obviously go back and layer some more. So you can see sort of like a, a ghost behind here. So you know what's really nice about these is once these are dry, they're dry and you can keep painting over them. Oh, good. Yes, yeah. Whoops, so I, I let some um, lines go there. But I think you get the idea. So I have these uh, calligraphy pens and for some reason I find they're better if you start by dipping them in water. Don't ask me why. And again if you're really good with this, this is where you could really get detailed and you could put some writing in. And um, some people love doing this detail work into the paintings. Acrylic paintings are great for this because acrylics really act as a gesso, a ground. So you can start adding some really fine marks. And I have lots of different nibs here. But you can just take this out and replace it and try it. So these are the colored inks, and I know not all of you have them, but I actually brought India ink, which I love to use a lot. So I'm gonna move on to another painting here. Higgins is really hard to find. I actually don't know where to buy this anymore, but they have Speedball at Opus. Um, and Basically, this is light, fast, permanent, and waterproof. So you put it on, you dry it, and then you can paint right over it. So in terms of our page, I'm adding, you know, very, uh, I would say, soft marks. I'm going quite fast, and it's it's more intuitive or gestural freehand. And this is something to consider when you're when you're making art: is are you adding straight lines, or are you? Um, are you adding freehand and you want to vary it up to create interest in your work? Yes. So inks, these black inks and Higgins in particular is fabulous for this splitting. Look at this, it's lovely, I love this. And you can see the texture underneath with the gesso that I applied. You mean you can paint over that? Once, Once it's, it's dry, dry yes. Mm -hmm. that you, you'll see, see those marks, you can paint over it and those marks will stay. This is really when you want to get into definition when you really want to start um, doing very small detailed work. A lot of illustrators absolutely love acrylic inks because you can really get, um, <clears throat> and notice how I can see that red through and get some good detail, that's what I was saying. Um, but here, because I'm using this modern color, the phthalo, I'm actually, it's, it's actually glazing a little bit. You see that? So that's something to consider with the color choices. There's so many considerations. Okay, let's see what happens when we wet these blue inks. Oh, it's lovely. So it's giving you these sort of watercolor, you're almost creating watercolor effects with, and look, it is giving you that sort of interesting split. So look, this is, I would keep them. That's only while it's wet. Though. Only while it's wet is it gonna use. Once it's dry, it's dry, just like paint. Um, or if you, if you want to buy paints that re-wet, it's called wash. So that's an acrylic paint that it acts like watercolor that re will re-wet like um, watercolor does. Wow, I'm getting sold. It's maybe time for a trip to the air store. So these are quite cool. I don't know about you, but I'm kind of enjoying it. 
See, look, so while it's wet, the ink splits, but after it dries, you will be able to paint over it. So, let's see what happens when you spray alcohol on the ink. Okay, oh. so it's not great. <laughs> so something to try too. You can just uh, rub it on. And this is great if you want to darken an area. And when you have texture, this is tissue paper under here. You can start to see where we would start to go by building layers. So charcoal is lovely. And this is also, um, I don't have any with me. Obviously charcoal is black, but if you like pastel, you can put pastel on. Now with these here, and here I'm rubbing it. I mean, if you don't want to take it off or rub it. Um, but this is quite nice. It adds quite a lot of definition already. I like, I like what I'm experiencing here. The whole point of using a fixative is that you can keep painting and layering since we did that. So now let's just see what happens when I don't. So I've added some charcoal here. You see how the charcoal is starting to smudge all over? And maybe I didn't want that. And maybe you do. I mean, it's your painting. It's your choice. So that's where a fixative would have prevented that. This is a 2B. And I'm just going to go in here. And I really don't have any plan with this painting. It was just pure demos. And I love to use these to highlight. It's just fun. And I dip it in water, as you can see here. Um, and uh, these smudge as well. I could let it dry like that. Or if I wanted to, I could paint a little bit with it. You could get out your paintbrush and you could even paint with these. I always use a pit pen if I finish a painting and I sign it on the back. One, because it's light fast and it's acid free. And a lot of people, like I used to before I knew, I, I would use a Sharpie pen on the back. And Sharpies have acid in them and they'll go through and they'll actually change the color and quality and consistency of your work and rot out the canvas. But these won't. What these are is... Sorry, what's the name again? Okay, these are pit pens, Faber-Castell pit pens. And what these are is they've taken India ink and they put it in a pen with a beautiful nib for you. Oh. And so the nice thing is you can, without having to use a calligraphy pen or ink from a bottle, is you can start putting lines on your work however you choose to, to do them, okay? And these are completely waterproof and light fast, so they're artist quality. You can paint right over this and it will not bleed. And it dries quickly. You can write into your, if you want to write into your work. You don't need fix it if you don't need to do anything. Just let it dry and then paint right over it. Um, with these ones too, I would say if you're using them, just please make sure that your surface is dry and clean because if, if it's not, the nib gets ruined and they are fairly pricey.